Hello again. Welcome back to Hyrule Science. This is the second episode in a series where I'm going to explore every fusible item in Tears of the Kingdom and see if I can find any interesting facts about them. But before that, I'd like to address some things. Some of you commented that the durability with fusing remains the same across all parts, which is true. Even a silver main Lionel horn breaks in the same amount of hits as an apple. I will still be testing durability anyways in case anything pops up that does not break in 14 hits, otherwise I won't be showing it in the video. Thank you all for the support on the last few videos I've posted, it means a lot to me. I still feel like I'm dreaming seeing those numbers and how many people have commented on the videos and just how many people have watched in general, it's... I love it. Thank you. One more thing is that it has come to my attention that the title in the latest video is inaccurate, so I changed it. Which I can see how the old title would be misleading as it would make you think that I would talk about why you shouldn't 100% the map. So thank you for leaving comments addressing this issue. I appreciate it. But enough about me. Let's do some science. To begin, fire fruit is obviously different than most other fruit. When you attach it to a weapon, it immediately bursts into a fireball when hitting anything, and will do so when attempting to shield surf with it. It's pretty useful for many other properties though. You can light fires using it and even do so from a distance, which can be especially handy when lighting bomb barrels ablaze to ambush enemies. You can even throw it at Gibdos to remove their armor, and it usually stuns most enemies like the Coblins. When thrown at any basic ice enemy, it will instantly kill them, which makes Ice Lizalfos a lot more bearable. Watch out for the Ice Choo Choo's though, since when they drop their jelly, it will be set ablaze and turn into Red Choo Choo Jelly. They will immediately stun any Ice Talus and clear the ice on it. Obviously you could use any other fire weapon, but this is a much cheaper alternative. Side note, I know people will point this out, so just in case you don't know, any single use plant item will have infinite uses for forest dweller weapons until they break, so make sure to have one on you in case you need it. It cooks into scorched, simmered fruit giving a boost to attack damage when Link is overheated. Surprisingly, it doesn't explode immediately when getting burned, going on a short timer before promptly exploding. Another surprise is that it immediately explodes when trying to freeze it, finally giving my ice sword the love it deserves. Ice fruit is like fire fruit, but made of ice. It also explodes on contact, freezing any enemy it hits for 30 seconds. This even includes Gibdos, and their armor will be removed after throwing out. I was hoping that attaching one to a shield would let you freeze an enemy when they hit the shield, but this does not seem to be the case. It has some pretty decent utility as well, allowing you to make ice platforms when you throw it in water. This doesn't include mires or hot springs though. It will also kill any type of basic fire enemy when thrown, and also stun igneo taluses. These don't really work for Gleox, though. It cooks into biting simmered fruit, giving a boost to attack damage when you're unbearably cold, and is on the same timer as fire fruit when burned. Unsurprisingly, it doesn't explode when you try to freeze it, unlike fire fruit. Shock fruit has many applications that can be useful, as it can disarm most enemies and remove skibdo armor. When striking metal, water, or even blocks of ice, it emits a wide shock area, damaging anything in the radius, which actually makes it extremely useful for catching fish. Which reminds me of how much I missed bomb fishing in the previous game. You can even use these to power electrical things in shrines for a very short duration. Cooking it gives a stormy meal, and burning it gives you the same short timer as the last two fruits. It's interesting to note that it does explode when you try to freeze it. Shocking. Splash fruit is unassuming at first, but it actually has some neat situational applications. Firstly, it can be used to clear any muck in the game, taking two splashes to clear a muck to rock shark. and you can use it to make yourself what? Doubling damage with Zora weapons if there isn't a pool around. Using Splash Fruit on Lava creates a stone platform to walk across if you don't have a hydrant. Surprisingly, it even clears the armor from Gibdos. It cooks into a rapid meal, burns until it explodes, and also explodes when you try to freeze it. That's honestly all of the interesting stuff I could find out about Splash Fruit. If you have any tips for it or any other materials, let me know in the comments. Dazzle Fruit. Boy, do I love Dazzle Fruit. To start, it can immediately stun almost any enemy in its radius, disarming most of them in the process, which is extremely useful in a pinch. When doing this to Gibdos, it can stun and clear the armor from an entire horde of them. One of the best uses of it is to instantly kill any stall enemy aside from stall Nox. Here's a small compilation of me using it against various enemies.
Remember that this only works on creatures with eyes, so like likes are out of the picture. My personal favorite use of it is blinding keys so that they just ragdoll on the ground. It's not useful, but it's funny. When used in conjunction with a forest dweller weapon, you can almost permanently blind enemies so long as it doesn't break. But be warned, as it goes on a 6 second cooldown when used, giving enemies enough time to strike back at you. Sadly, it doesn't give a unique bonus when cooking, so I don't recommend cooking it. It burns the same as the previous fruits and goes off when you try to freeze it. For mushrooms, there's really not much to say. At first. Almost all of them have pretty much the exact same properties when fusing. When fused to a weapon, it makes the weapon bouncy, making it so that the enemy you're hitting gets flung when you do the final hit of a combo or a power attack. This does the same thing as the spring-loaded hammer back in Breath of the Wild. Each mushroom stands out in their own way in different regards though, mostly in cooking. Hylian and Sky Shrooms give some health, and Dura Shrooms give bonus stamina. Stamina Shrooms give a bit of stamina. Both Hardy Truffle types give you bonus hearts. Chill Shrooms give a bit of cold resistance when cooked. Zap Shrooms give shock resistance when cooked. Rush Shrooms give speed. Razor Shrooms give attack damage. Iron Shrooms give defense. Silent Shrooms give sneak. And Bright Caps make you glow. Notice how I didn't mention Sun Shrooms. Sun Shrooms have the same properties as spicy peppers, meaning you can use Sun Shrooms to create an updraft. The best mushroom out of all of them, and you can probably see where this is going, is the Puff Shroom. Puff Shrooms create what is effectively a smoke screen, blinding enemies and allowing you to easily sneak strike a small group of enemies in its radius. Keep in mind if you're in an area where it's especially windy, your smoke screen will go away faster. When you fuse it to a forest dweller weapon, you've basically beaten the game. By the way, I need to vent because it's extremely annoying finding stupid articles like these saying where something is then going there, and finding that the thing that they said was there, isn't there. Thanks, internet. So you know what? If you're in need of some Endura Shrooms, there are three in this location. And two in this location. Anyways, that's all for me for today. I hope you learned something new in this video. Again, if you have any facts that you would like to share, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and have a good time zone.